Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I had to figure out a, a different place to film because I thought, I think at 10 o'clock, all the buses are running through here. So I'm just outside my laundry room and my garage. I don't know, we're, we're gonna find new stuff that works all the time. <laughs> so um, today we are at the fourth station. Jesus is denied by Peter. So our text for this morning is Matthew 26, 69 to 75. Let's just read it for us. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them saying, I don't know what you're talking about. But when he went out to the porch and another servant girl saw him. She said to the bystanders, Hey, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. And after a little while, by the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. He says, look, I do not know the man. And at that moment, the cock crowed. And then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out, and he wept bitterly. Gary Jansen continues on in his book, Station to Station, by saying this, how we encounter Jesus this morning. He says, imagine it's a cold spring night and your best friend has been taken away, arrested, and you fear that you might be next. And as you try to lie low and a number of people recognizing you as a follower of the man who has been, has been arrested, you have committed no crime unless friendship is a crime. So what do you do when people accuse you of being associated with him? What is your response? Have you ever betrayed a friend or felt the need to disassociate yourself from someone who has having a tough time? Why did you do this? What are your feelings about your actions? If you were in the same situation now, would you do anything differently? Do you accept the flaws in your family and your friends? Is there something that prevents you from fully loving someone who may have had made mistakes in the past? Uh, we had this amazing, loving, caring guy in our church. Uh, we, his name was Bill. Well, we just kept, we always kept, called him Billy. Billy was one of those guys where um, he was full of life, joie de vivre. He'd be up at the front of the church and uh, hands out and be, you know, uh, screaming, screaming and singing at the same time. Um, he he had some he was vulnerable like he had some some issues that he was struggling with and when i came on staff when we were um this is when we were in victoria he and i always kind of connected and there were some things that i knew that there were some deficiencies that he was struggling with and then one time uh we were talking and he really wanted to get sober and I, thought, and I was like, yeah, he, he told me about his, his uh, struggle with sobriety for years. And there was a moment as a pastor, you're like, okay, well, um, there's a meeting in our back portable, like our back building. Um, you know, I think it was like a Wednesday night or Thursday night. Have fun, you know, go, go there and um, do, do your thing. Go get your, go get your sobriety. But there was a moment where he was like, yeah, I think I've done all that. I've always just had to go by myself. And there was a moment where I had to choose as a pastor, like, do I, do I associate with this, this arena, this, this world? 
or I don't have to. Like there's there's no one telling me that you know to go that next level, to go that next uh, in level of intimacy with this man. So I said to Billy, I said, okay, listen, I know this is a huge thing. You haven't been to uh, an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting for uh, for years. How about if I go with you? And he's like, well, and he just almost to the point of crying is like, okay. Okay, so I showed up. He was standing in front of the church smoking a cigarette, kind of. He's really super anxious about the whole thing. And I, he and I walked into the back portable where they were having their meeting, and we sat together. And when they were introducing everyone, you know, he got up and he's like, Hi, my name is Billy, and I'm an, an alcoholic. And it came to me, and I said, Hi, I'm John. I'm not an alcoholic but I'm Billy's friend and his pastor. And in that moment, those people kind of looked at me like, what, <laughs> why are you here? And I explained to him a more, actually Billy explained why he needed me there to, to make sure he was there. And sometimes some pastors would have disassociated maybe and go, well, I don't really want to be known like at an alcohol. What are people, what are the optics of this? What does it look like that the pastor is going to an AA meeting? Hmm. I just didn't care. And if people did ask, like, so I saw you go to the AA meeting last night. This is the story. Billy can talk about it and people there can corroborate my story. But Peter struggled. They, they called him on his on his dialect like they, they 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 challenged him i never did get challenged ever like i told my leadership team this is what was the case and they were all celebrating that more billy that was getting sober i i think for us we have to stand you know stand up for what is true what is good what is honorable what is god loving and it might, it might sting a bit, but that's your journey with Jesus. If you're in a situation where that is like that and you need help, well, give me a call. I've been there. I know it's tough. But if, if, it, if it means someone is going to draw closer to Jesus, then we need to do it. Hey, guys, I love you. And as we continue to do these Stations of the Cross, it is going to, um, do you remember like the old school coffee machines, the percolators? And it has that little glass vial at the top and coffee would percolate up. But things when a coffee percolator, you don't know the timing of when it would go. It would actually su surprise you. Like, and it would just be like, oh, well, I, I guess it's doing its thing. This is what sometimes I believe what the Holy Spirit does, is he percolates things up in and out of you, and it has no timing, <laughs> and you don't, you can't, uh, you can't fix it, you can't control it. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to percolate things through our series, through this Holy Week. And I pray that it deepens you in your journey with Jesus more than ever before. And we will never sit in, you know, Colombo Street or St. Martin's or Eastside. It's going to be a powerful time. It's going to be a powerful season. So God, I pray blessing over everyone this morning. God, I ask that you would just move in your power and your presence and in your person of Jesus Christ. Lord, if there are situations that we are wrestling with when we have to stand up for what is true and righteous, God, I pray that you would give us the courage, better, the bravery to move forward. I'll bless you guys, and I'll see you guys at 8 o'clock tonight.